All right, everybody, thanks for uh, joining the uh, virtual public meeting of the Allington Housing Authority, February 16, 2021. Um, I'm going to sort of call to order. This is the regular meeting uh, starting at 7.04, call to order. And uh, before I get started, uh, I think uh, everybody knows that we lost uh, Joe Daly, the, uh, <clears throat> a true American patriot, a friend. He was a member of the board. He was a mentor. Uh, his wife, Janet, also joined him a couple days after. Um, he was the ultimate public servant. And um, I think it's going to be a huge loss to the town of Arlington. I'd just like to have a uh, moment of silence for Joe and Janet, if that's OK. So thanks. Okay, thanks guys. Uh, he was, he was, he's gonna be a great loss, he's a great guy. Uh, and Janet, they called him the Daily Double, which was great. So that was uh, pretty cool. Um, hey, can I add a bit of that? Go, go ahead, ahead. yeah. yeah uh, go ahead. I, had, I had gone to the wake this morning and uh, yeah. the family uh, is extremely grateful to all what housing has done for Joe and his wife. And uh, John sent the beautiful basket of flowers there. And uh, John and I both attended the funeral um, and uh, Joe's, son and i forget if it's joe jr i didn't i'm not it sure is, but it is joe jr yeah yeah, yeah. He, he he spoke at length on how important drake village was and housing was to joe and uh, it was a very uh, a very nice tribute so yeah. you should be yeah. proud of that yeah it were said the same to me at the wake i went early yeah. this weekend so mm -hmm. very very appreciative of what we had up so um Cool. John, are you right. recording this meeting? This conference will now be recorded. Thank you, Pam. Huge echo. Pam, okay. Thank you. Be on the because it doesn't Cool. Uh, roll call. Brian? Yeah. Uh, Gar? Here. Joanne? Here. Fiorella? Here. And it's here. Right. Okay. Uh, appointments. Anybody from the local? Ten oh, one other thing first, just as a matter of business, if anybody wants to, uh, to chat, please uh, do that by writing into the chat. It's the up and up hand corner uh, you can see it next to the star to the left uh, if you want to speak just uh, uh, please ask through the chat uh, okay thanks um, local tenant any local tenant appointments or organizations here Pam Hauser president Winslow Towers Go ahead, Pam. okay um, I have a few questions um, regarding Richard uh, Murray's seat that Fiorello is now occupying till April. Is that going to be done by going on to be a general elect into the general election for the town, or is it going to be a tenant rep seat? That, that will be the tenant rep seat. Yes. And how will that work, John? We're not sure yet. We're waiting for the final regulations from DHCD, but most likely the way uh, the, the plan was to work was that they were going to, the tenants associations were going to nominate uh, a couple names uh, to send to the board of selectmen. So my, my, my guess is these tenants association would be able to submit a couple names uh, to the board of selectmen for uh, very similar to the last process, but they would come from tenants association to the selectmen and the board of selectmen would rep would um vote and decide on who the tenant representative was going to be that's but the final the final regulations in dhcd aren't out yet but they should be out very very shortly okay uh, my second thing is is and i brought this up at the president's meeting last wednesday we have a very bad situation regarding parking here and 
The reason I'm bringing this up is because it also involves the town of Arlington. When we have a tenant that moves in and there's no parking available in either our upper lot or lower lot, they buy, pay $364 to the town of Arlington to park their car overnight on their property. Now, if they buy the ticket in August, it's only it's still $364 and it's only good till the end of the year. Come January, they have to buy pay another $364. And say they paid the $364 and a month later they get a parking space in one of our lots, they do not get a rebate. I had proposed to John possibly to speak to the state building across the street, the DSS building, that maybe we can use some of their spaces at night. And that way these people do not have to pay the town. I mean, that's a lot of money to shell out up front. And I just feel this is something the board should look into because it's getting to be a hardship. And I mean, we're having problems with parking here anyhow with this building. There's not enough spaces, too many people. We have three spaces in the middle and people don't know how to park in those spaces. And they have to move it if it snows so the plows can plow. I mean, it's just getting ridiculous. I know that building is leased to the state by, from my rack properties. But something has to be done because it's getting ridiculous and people cannot afford the parking situation for the town. They're getting greedy. Question, question, Nick. Go ahead, Brian. So, if you move in in September, they would charge you the three hundred and fifty dollars just to get you to the first of the year. Is that right? Yeah, that is correct. They don't prorate it. That doesn't seem fair. No. no that doesn't seem fair. They do not prorate. Who do we know? Who's in charge of that, John? It would be the, uh, the town manager's office, I believe. We a few years. Um, up at Drake Village, what we've done uh, years ago, we used to purchase 25 parking spaces off the town of Arlington at a reduced price of $180 per space for the year. And then when a resident moved in, we used to just have them pick up that $180 cost. So they gave us a 50% a discount on uh, on parking up at Hurd Field for the residents at Drake. And, and then what happened is someone complained about the $180 and the state uh, came back and they said that we can't actually charge for parking and we can't be the, uh, the go-between in, be in between the town of Arlington. So we couldn't do what we were doing. So what the residents at um, Drake Village do is they go to the town, uh, they bring a copy of their lease that shows their address on it and, uh, and they can purchase the parking up at Drake Village at Hood Field for $180. I mean, we, we could request, put a request into the town of Arlington that they work out a system like that uh, at the municipal parking lot or at the uh, parking lot up behind Buzzle Field. Um, but, but yeah, I, 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 I mean, a dollar, if you're there for the whole year, a dollar a day is certainly a bargain, all right? But to not prorate it to somebody that moves in throughout the year is really not fair. So, I mean, I think at a minimum, we should ask them to prorate it um second to that maybe they can give a better price you know um if then in the 350 dollars or 60 dollars whatever it is so uh, i mean I, i'm all for voting for us to send a letter over there i'm happy to do that yeah, I think okay. as i said okay joanne joanne my turn um i'm sorry i don't know the specifics, but I remember over a year ago, um, the select board voted that people with disabilities who are low income under certain can park on the street. And I think this might be a case where you might actually get more, be allowed to park uh, for some of the residents on the street. And that might relieve a lot of the parking congestion. I'm sorry, I don't remember the exact. I know Laura Kiesel um, presented it and it was approved. So I think that in getting in touch with the town manager, 
I think you might want to ask about that stipulation. Thank you, Alma. We Can you take this offline and, and, and address or reach out to the town manager and see what's up? So, oh, happy to yeah. do that. Okay, cool. Um, anything else, Pam? That's all I have. That's all I have, Nick. Okay, Marion, you had a question. You're on mute, Marion. You're on mute. <laughs> um, yeah, I came up with another one since then on this topic. Um, there's also the issue of people who purchase um, the parking spaces near schools, like at Menominee Manor, um, where those spaces are not available once it snows. Mm. And um, and so then you have to balance your parking, your car on the head of a needle, you know. Um, and so there needs to be some sort of remedy for that situation as well. Um, when you suddenly, in a crisis, have no place you can put your car. Um, uh, but my... My other question is on um, the COVID vaccine. Um, when the 766 residents are going to receive the COVID vaccine, as I know, Cambridge Housing Authority and most of the housing authorities are giving them out at the doors of the people's residences. Um, how will people in the more remote residences like the condos know when this is going to happen? We will notify them when we find out when um, they're gonna be doing it. I have, I have a COVID-19 update on on the agenda, but- On the agenda, we'll take that Is that okay? Can I we can wait for I'll talk about it now if you want, but- No, why don't we wait, John? Uh, we can wait, I just- you know, Thanks, source of concern, you know, because I just don't know what to do, you know, yeah. You know. uh, we'll take that up in the uh, M7. Any okay. other, uh, um, Pam, you're all set? Yes, I'm all set. Okay, any other local tenant organizations on the line? Hi, this is Kathy at Drake. Hey, hi, Kathy. Kathy. Um, hi, guys. I have a question for Joanne. Um, she had sent me uh, an email this morning from the board that the board told her to give me a call. And honestly, I'm not sure what she's actually, uh, what you guys are actually looking for. Are you looking for how things are done here? You know, between the tenants, the building manager, and... Um, minute man i mean is that what you're looking for oh well that, that comes later in my report um one of the things um i was asked to do a while ago <laughs> is to think of what better ways to improve communication during covid and one of the ways i thought would be ways for tenants to be eight since there aren't meetings now ways there may be ways for tenants to be able to relay their concerns to the president of associations. And I thought no better person to ask than a president of a tenants association, what ideas they had. And I got well, back some nice responses. See, we don't have any high tech people that can ask us questions. It's just, I am always downstairs, off and on. So if anybody needs anything, I'm there. If they need a question, I'm there. The same with Jack. If I had a problem about the COVID, people not understanding, and then told Jack, Jack turned around and did a beautiful scale, and I could show it to the tenants, and they all understood what we were talking about. The thing about the people that are shut-ins, we have um, an association here called Minuteman. 
and yeah. Cody runs that. So between Jack, myself, and Cody, we talk about certain things. Um, the thing is, Cody manages most of our shut-ins. He goes to visit them every day. He makes sure that they're getting their meals on wheels. He makes sure that there's nothing they need. And um, maybe that's something that the other buildings could look into is having a Minuteman rep there because they do um, cleaning. They send you cleaning people when you can't clean. Um, they have people doing your laundry if you can't do laundry. We have food sent to them. So maybe that's something that you guys should look into. Mm -hmm. So between the three of us, Jack, myself, and Cody, things go pretty good because we communicate with each other every day. Wow. So Minute Man might be a, a, a good source because it takes away all the shut-ins from us and Cody visits them and he takes care of them. If there's a problem, Cody will come to us. I'm very <laughs> glad to hear that. Um, actually, I spoke with Cody two months ago and he said there may be some possibilities to expand some of those services to the other sites. So I'm glad you reminded me of it. Yeah, no, yeah. Cody explained to me today that um, they're looking for 11 more people to join the organization. So maybe you can get your foot in the door through Cody and possibly get your name on a list in order to get a Minuteman there. Kathy, I think what I think what Joanne was trying to do was seeing if there was any communication gap between the housing authority itself and the tenants at the sites. And if we were not getting communication to you guys that you needed. Is that right, Joanne? I think that would go to the major well, concern. Um, since there aren't tenant, regular tenant meetings now because of COVID, I was trying to think of a way for the presidents to, and it sounds like it's fine at Drake Village because you have these other people who are in touch with everybody, including yourself. But I was trying to think of other ways that presidents of the tenants associations could know about concerns since yeah. in the meeting, and I know you all go to meet with the maintenance the president's meeting once a month and yep. so i was wondering if we needed to strengthen some of the communication for the tenants to be able to get in touch with the president um but it's not well, like usually you have, a, you have an organization usually i'm downstairs four times a day i'm in the front room so I make myself visible for them. And if they have a question, and if I can't answer it, I'll go to Jack or I'll go to Cody. But they know that we're there. And if they ever have a question, they ask it. So as far as anything else, it's the shut-ins that bother us because we don't know how they're doing. But Cody's on top of all of that. Every time I don't see a certain person coming out after a while, I go to Cody and say, gee, did you see Connie today? He says, nope. He said, I seen her yesterday. She's doing good. Don't worry about it. So, but we're visible. Jack's visible. I'm visible. Cody's visible. Yeah, it seems like you're pretty active. Go ahead, John. Yes. Nick, I, I just want to comment. Um, Minuteman Senior Services does, uh, although they're located up at uh, the housing building and and they're in constant communication with uh, Kathy and Jack up there, uh, they also do provide services at our other units. We have, you know, in various buildings, we might have uh, maybe 10 or 12 people at CUSAC, uh, excuse me, at uh, Winslow Towers that will receive, receive services through Minuteman. It might be home health aides or nurses that will come in. Uh, or people help them do their laundry. So they, they do that in actually all our buildings. Their, their main office, though, that we build for them and, and provide for them uh, is up at Drake Village. But they do provide all the same services in all the all our other elderly buildings. They, occasionally, they will run into issues where uh, they're funded for the allotment of funding for so many people. Um, they max out on that uh, sometime during the year. And they can't take on new new low income clients that don't pay uh, for a while, usually to a new year. But uh, they've been 
generally excellent in uh, getting the services to all our, all our residents. So, okay, cool. Right. Yeah, Nick. Nick, one thing. Uh, I, I bumped into Bob Tozzi at the wake and the funeral, and he worked for Minute Man, um, and he was mentioning um, that apparently they do a lot of service down at the man, the Monotony Manor as well. Uh, obviously, didn't go into any details, but but you know we talked about Minute Man and so forth. So it sounds like Minute Man's quite active, whether we know exactly what they do or not. But it sounds like they're active throughout all the properties. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Uh, Pam, you wanted to say something, Pam, on this topic, real quick. Yes, I, I'm down, in, I'm downstairs every day when the mail is delivered. And if anybody, and I make sure people, the new tenants especially, know who I am, that I am the tenant president, and if they have any problems, to come see me. I'm there every time. I have them knocking on my apartment door at eight, nine, ten o'clock at night with problems. <laughs> and you get me how I am if I come to the door at that hour at night. But I do try to help out, and I'll try to help any way I can. So, you know, the ones that I worry about are the ones that refuse to come out of their apartments due to COVID. Sure. And there's nothing you can do. Minute Man's not going to force them out. Nobody's going to force them out. They're going to be there until the end. I think what the I think and Joanne, that's I have to say. Joanne was just reaching out to understand how we can help. And if there's any way we can help. So, so I think you guys are doing a pretty good job those sites being active as an active tenant association. We just wanted to make sure we were doing everything we could do to help you guys during this crazy, crazy time. So if you have any concerns or you know, please reach out to Joanne. We've asked her to do this. And just to make sure that the communication is getting back and forth uh during the time. So, okay. Cool. Um, who else was up? Uh, John Ward, I think you probably Yeah, thank you. Um, I'd like to address the process for selecting the tenant rep to the board while um, allowing the tenant association presidents to uh, um, nominate people. I think that is a uh, uh, that eliminates a large number of people who might be interested. I think that uh, there should be a notice given to everybody in all the buildings uh, that uh, the space is available and to notify Ms. Kropelka, who is the select board uh, uh, clerk. Um, we need to have a, 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 an open process uh, to start with right here in Winslow. Uh, for the last six months, there's no way for anybody to know who the tenant president is because the uh, website has Brenda Cox listed as the president. Um, you know, uh, it's nice that they, the, the presidents show up um, in the various lobbies, but um, to start with, the, the lobbies are not intended to have 132 people rolling through it during mail time. Um, we're trying to uh, avoid that kind of uh, situation here. So um, what I would like to do is to see the the board extend that process to incorporate everybody some way, which is a, 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 a more amenable way of dealing with this. And I would also like to add that I don't think Mr. Griffin should be a part of it in any way because the board hires the, the director. Uh, there's a conflict of interest by having the board, the, the uh, executive director of the board, having any influence whatsoever in the selection of the tenant member. And I would like to hear somebody address that particular situation. I think, go ahead, John. Let, go ahead, John, and I'll probably address it. Go ahead. Sure. Yeah. No, I, I can tell you right now, um, the regulations are uh, being set by the Department of Housing and Community Development. Uh, we have no say over what the regulations uh, would say. Uh, they they may come out with a, in the regulations when they come out with, it's supposed to be forwarded by the Tenants Association. There may be a provision in there for anyone who's interested to send a, res a resume into the selectman's office. Uh, furthermore, I have not had and will not have and never have had any input on who the next board member is going to be. 
or a tenant or anything else? John, I, you know, John Wood, you know, yeah. I can, I can tell you that we will follow the rules. Okay, John? What are the rules? Have, what's that? You John? We don't have them the yet, John. We don't have them yet, John. They were being put together by DHCD as we speak. They so just what, came uh, out. They who just is came the contact out. person at the DHCD? You can call Bob Pelletier. He's our representative. Okay. Um, anything else, John Wood? Um, nope. I'll, I'll be in touch with Mr. Pelletier. I've spoken to him numerous times. I found him to be pretty uh, useless as far as answering questions, though. It is what it is, John. That's our contact. So um it was someone on it that came up me to everyone someone wanted to talk about the fiorella speech was that you fiorella i don't know who he is me it's fiorella. me sorry i'm sorry sure that's me oh no the me is me who's sorry, me that's me me. Who's me my name's lisa i live down in monotony manor my question was just i think it was pam who brought it up earlier about the seat and what you guys were just talking about with the tenant association will be sending a name in what happens with monotony manor where we don't have a tenant association I, like I how do we get a name yeah go ahead joanne um, thanks the state sure. made a provision if there's no tenant association then you can nominate yourself and that's also true of the people i think in the condominium complexes they don't have a tenant tenant association okay you can just apply okay um, okay Thank, thank I would think anyone could apply then. It, is that um, so? Is is this is this separate from the uh, Arlington against racism thing that keeps putting flyers all over the place down here about oh, yeah, um, a seat on some board <laughs> in Arlington? <laughs> is That's this a totally not, different situation? I saw one of their flyers. They're talking about town meeting. Okay. Not about all right. The not representative about on okay the Arlington Housing Board. Okay, thank you for the clarification. Thank you, and we'll, as soon as we get to- And also, I understand it, and John can tell us when he gets the final, that this is the first time this happens, it's only gonna be for one year. Right. And then, because it's finishing out Murray's term. Yeah, exactly. And then, then they will have another, next year, there will be another- um, for five, for five, for five years. Like an application process, and maybe by that time it will certainly be more opened up to right. people. Cool. Thanks, Joanne. Uh, Sherry, Nick, Sherry, Nick, 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 order for us, Nick. Go ahead. Nick. Go ahead. Yeah, where are you, Brian? Yeah, sorry. Uh, Bella keeps on dropping in and out of this. Um, Johnny, maybe you she might have a bad connection. Um, you might want to call her and tell her she could dial in by phone and participate by phone. I don't know if she yeah. knows that. who was that fiorella i don't see her on oh she's on she's, she's on, on. She okay i'm sorry i thought she dropped no. go ahead um sherry go ahead thank you yes thank you um i just wanted to say that i understand the process of appointing a tenant is uh, a responsibility of the select board i just like to say that i see no reason why fiorella does not continue in this position um you had we had this you had the opening for a while and you had applicants and she was selected and from what i've seen she's done a monumentally great job at both meetings she offers intelligent suggestions probing questions she's reading the budget she just spent two days over the weekend at a conference a video conference run by the a tenants organization i think it's statewide and i don't think you will find anyone better suited for this position thanks thank you sherry yeah. okay anybody else the I, I just want to say thank you sherry i appreciate that um i'm looking into it and i look forward to uh, working with the board and select board on this yeah, um, for the waiver. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Fiorella. Uh, anybody else from the general public? I don't see anything, so we'll go on to the next one. John, uh, project updates? Updates, okay. Um, 
just getting getting ready. We're having con, uh, contacts with the window company for Winslow Towers. Uh, they're still looking to begin uh, mobilizing the beginning of March. Um, you know, so it's it's going to start to come together uh, fairly quickly in the next in the next month or so. Um, whether it's the very beginning of March is when they'll start mobilizing, depending on the weather. We can get get rid of this ice and some of the snow. Um, that's been, that's moving along, and we're we're gonna probably at the end of February we'll get together with Pam and the Tenants Association from uh, Winslow Towers, and we'll go over the game plan of when when the units are gonna be scheduled, where the tenants can go for the day. Uh, we're gonna be setting up a couple apartments, so. Uh, if they have to leave their apartment, we're going to have another uh, fully furnished apartment they can relax in. Uh, we'll uh, provide them probably some uh, refreshments for the day, some food. Um, uh, a lot of coordination is going to uh, start to come together uh, for the window project at, at uh, Winslow. Uh, the, the roof over Cusack Terrace, um, we are applying for that the grant for sustainability so we can get an energy energy efficient roof on there um the, uh, and in order to do that we need to have a, uh, the, the building certified by the lean, people from lean uh they've done a number of those certifications already uh, we just want to make sure we have the complete certification for the cusack building so they can uh so we'll qualify for that grant that, that's a fifty-five thousand dollar grant that we should be receiving for that once we apply. Uh, but we got to get the building that certification for the uh, sustainability, uh, so we can get the grant sustainability grant. Um, we're waiting for a little bit better weather. Then the the bids will go out for the uh, balcony project over at Chestnut Manor. We're resurfacing all the exterior balconies. Um, the handicap accessibility um, bathrooms at Chestnut Manor and at Winslow Towers uh, is going uh, going forward. Um, over at Cusack Terrace, I know uh, Ellen Lehigh, I don't know if she's on here tonight, but she had uh, asked last month about uh, when the handicap accessible doors would be put in and actually uh, installed today. So the, li the library now has, uh, at CUSAC has handicap accessible doors and both bathrooms have uh, automatic door openers on them also, Great. all for handicap accessibility. So that that should be, uh, should have been completed by today. They were there installing them today, so. Um, Great stuff, John. And I, th and I think that's it for right now. Oh, the um, we're, we're waiting on. Um, I haven't heard from the CPA committee yet regarding funding for the Drake Village project, so I'm just waiting to hear from that. I know um, they have a meeting tonight, John. They have a meeting tonight. Okay. Well, hope, hopefully they're going to approve that. If they do, if they do uh, give us funding, we'll be able to get uh, new doors for all the cottages up at Drake Village, which is badly needed. So it would uh, be a great project. Hopefully they'll they'll approve that so cool great thanks sean um item five joe and joseph at daily memorial anybody want to speak to this or yeah i'd like to speak first okay, um thanks. obviously we all know joe we know what he contributed over the years and uh you know one thought is do we do we form a, a subcommittee and and look to see and come up with some recommendations and how we can memorialize them um i mean i've got some thoughts and ideas uh might be might be good to do it in a subcommittee and and then propose something formally to the board yeah i think that's a great idea um anybody else i just yeah. okay hey, join. a question yep um has the family spoken to you at all about what they might like or what they think would be particularly good to do no brian no 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 and, and obviously uh today wasn't wasn't the opportunity to do that obviously but but i think you know if we form a subcommittee yeah i would i would search within our structure and then 
chat with the the family to see you know what are they thinking of is there some something that prefer uh one thing versus another or something yeah i think it should be a you know a pretty open type process and then it, it, i did mention it to them at the uh, walking through line and i said we would like to do something for joe and they were very 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 yeah. very appreciative so uh, yeah. i think yeah, if we do from a subcommittee and we go figure out what we can do talk to the family see what they're at and uh um i it's a great idea so yeah yeah i mean i wouldn't rush in, but i think we should you know let's not rush yeah you know, i would like to see a commemorative plaque for him in the building as you walk in Sure. I'd like to see a, a plaque for him there because I mean that guy did so much for us. It's not funny. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. I think we'll take that all into consideration. Brian, do you want to head up? I do. Want to I'm more than I'm more than happy to head that up. Yep. All right. Anybody else? I want. I just want to say something. I just want to say something on behalf of Joe. Joe just wasn't a politician. Joe Daly was a statesman. He mm -hmm. outshined and he did so much for this whole town. Between exactly. the Legion and everything else, he did a lot. He was a statesman in the That's true true. sense of the word. Thank you, Pam. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Um, anybody else? <coughs> Go ahead, John. Correct. Well, you're on mute. You're on mute, John. Okay. Um, I just like to say I sat next to Joe at a lot of the meetings, and um, very often I he'd make little comments. And the one thing the comments showed was he really, what I was most impressed with Joe on, I know he had a great background and did a lot for the town and he was in all kinds of things, but he had a real love for people. I never heard him with a nasty word. I never heard him being vindictive or bitter. He just really liked people. And I think yeah. that probably that came from all the different things he did as a union representative, as uh, uh, working for a housing authority, being a veteran, you know, being involved in town affairs. And I've got to say, that's the one thing I noticed in about night. I mentioned mentioned it once when I returned home that uh, after being just so impressed of how well intentioned and benevolent he was, uh, I said uh, that's the kind of grandfather I hope I'll be someday. So he was. I, I just can't. I can't uh, talk about all his background because I didn't know him that well. But I just always was impressed by how benevolent he was to the people. Cool. I agree. Yeah. Absolutely, John. Absolutely. He he even like uh, he, lived, he lived for his grandkids, man. He was so proud of them, and there were few of them there today. So yeah. it was great to see. Um, okay, Brian, you'll head it up. Anybody would like to join? I, I joined myself. I knew him. He was sort of a mentor to me. I've known him for years. Um, the, the, only thing I'm, the only thing I might suggest, Nick, is if you're going to do a subcommittee, uh, you probably should not have a majority of the board on that subcommittee. You should probably have, you know, two board members on the subcommittee. Uh, rather than having a majority of the board on the subcommittee. Okay, and then and then have what civilians or something? Yeah, civilians. Sorry. I, 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 I think, think, Kathy, I think Kathy. Nick, I think Kathy would be a great person for this. Kathy, being absolutely. the president. Yeah, absolutely. She, yeah. she will. She will. Yeah. Wow! 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 What are you getting me into there, Brian? <laughs> <laughs> Signing you up again. You don't have yeah, to do it yet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Brian. Um, John, John Greco, do we have to set up the subcommittee tonight or let Brian go? Yeah, if, if, if it's appropriate uh, and everybody feels comfortable with it and you want to vote for a subcommittee tonight, the board is, you have a majority of the board vote, you can uh, you can establish a subcommittee if you wish. Okay. Does that mean we establish it tonight or we wait and let Brian go and let him establish, establish it tonight? It? Okay. Yeah, I mean, there's no, no, there's nothing wrong with doing it tonight. I mean, it was on the agenda, and it's, it's still part of the same topic. So that uh, I think it's, it's that generally yes. one of the topics that came up at the board meeting that was advertised in the uh, agenda. Right. Okay. So I'll, I'll make that motion. Uh, I'll make a motion that we establish a subcommittee uh, to investigate um, opportunities uh, to come up with some plan to memorialize uh, the life of Joe Daly uh, within the housing authority system hey john okay can we, can we also include gn daily in that also possibly the daily double the daily double oh, oh yeah yeah, yeah. I think that's yeah the be... daily double i think yeah. that's the name i think that's the name <laughs> we'll the daily double subcommittee. Yeah. yeah and joe always said i gotta talk to my bride that's, That's all right. he ever called her was my bride. 
exactly. It, it yeah. was lovely. Yeah, they were on a honeymoon for sixty-five years or whatever it was. So, right. yeah, it was yeah, pretty cool. Yeah. Go ahead, Gar. Can I second uh, and further upon the motion that you and Brian be on the committee? Yeah, sure. And Kathy, because you know, yeah, you guys know him. You, you two board members knew him the best. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we have a second. Any discussion around that? I just want to say, Brian, I would like to be on that committee also. Sure. Yep. Oh, may I say something to Pam, please? Yes, Pam, um, you jinxed us, Pam. At the president's Why? meeting, you said your washer and dryer are always falling, breaking. And I told you, no, I was no. since they were free. And now what? We have a broken washer and a broken dryer. You jinxed us. <laughs> no, mine? Wins, Winslow's aren't breaking. It was Cusack. <laughs> We have a a motion on the on the table. So all in favor, uh Gar. Yes. Brian. Yes. Joanne. Yes. Fiorella. Yes. All right, cool. And I say yes. So thank you for that. And I know Joe's family will be very appreciative. Yep. So great stuff. Nick, what does that subcommittee consist of? Just again. Did you myself, it? myself, Brian. Um, at the AM Okay. And we'll come back with a recommendation. All right. Um, item six communications, uh, the website, Johnny. This is from uh, Joanne. Oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Joanne, you want to um, lead this discussion? Go ahead. Sorry, Joanne. I know I, I just said you were a communication lady and I, I blew it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, it turns out to be a big project. <laughs> so I'm yeah. only going to do two parts of it. And I'm not as far as long as I wished I would be. But if people don't mind, I think I'd start with the Tenants Association because we've, we've already started talking about it. Um, that at least some people thought it might be good to, uh, well, we're moving in to the computer age. So at some point, hopefully after COVID, it goes away soon, that it'll be much more feasible for tenants to talk to the president, um, even if they're shut ins on their computers. So I think we ought to look into that more. Um, some a president told me she would be willing to take for those who have computers. And by the way, the Council on Aging will lend people computers. Of course, uh, they have to know how to use them. But she'd be willing to take suggestions. And the other possible, the low tech one, <laughs> is to have just a box by the mailbox for people who'd like to put in suggestions. It doesn't seem like that's at all necessary from the two presidents who've spoken already, but it might be in other situations. And then there's the whole issue of Monotony Manor, which doesn't have a tenants association. I'd like to say that we are moving forward though with an organizing committee first to do outreach and to examine the rules and then moving on to an election committee then an election and then we present it to i think john griffin <laughs> or to the board and we get approved that's the idea but meanwhile what i would like to um present is the idea that since there hasn't been a tenants association in nine years so people don't remember, they just don't know what a president does. And I would like to make a motion that a representative from the organizing committee who's a tenant could attend the president's meetings with maintenance um, once a month so that they become more knowledgeable about the workings of that group 
and they can better explain what the duties of the president are in that respect. And they can also hear about issues about maintenance. So that's a motion. Can I just well, we talk, Oh, sorry. We, we talk to maintenance every day. And if there's a problem, we ask them and they said, just tell us, um, calling in because it, it, it needed to be called in. Well, okay. but, yeah. Maintenance is pretty good. Um, I really don't know where you're going with that one, Joanne. Oh, right, because it's like a because all the presidents get together with maintenance once a month and have discussions. No, we don't. Like a representative who's a tenant from the Monotony Manor Organizing Committee to also be able to attend to get. Yeah, to but we don't get together once a month with them. You don't. No. How often? Yeah. I'm sorry, then I the only person the only person for maintenance that we get together with is Bob Cronin and Rowley. Yeah. They're the only two people from the maintenance department that come to the president's meeting. And we have a very good rapport with our maintenance man here at Winslow. And also you said something about computers, Joanne. Every elderly building does have a computer in their community room and it's open to everybody's use. And I also have a suggestion box in my lobby. I have a suggestion box also. And the last thing that I just pulled out three days ago, it said, Happy Effin New Year's. So that's what they think of our suggestion box. <laughs> so, Joanne, what was your motion on this? Okay, let's hold on. Joanne, what was your motion? Can I make a point before? Go ahead, Brian. Um, I think, Joanne, I think I heard that you want to do an organizing committee and then make a presentation to John. But remember now, John has nothing to do with the tenant associations or who's elected. That's a toll, and we're not allowed basically to do that as well. I mean, we would you'd have the League of Women voters that would come in and run this election. So we don't have to approve the president. I mean, whoever that whoever the nominee man votes for. We just, want, we just want a representative to be able to go to the president's meeting whenever it's held with maintenance from from Manotomy Manor. Right? Until until we, they have a a, a tenants association. A okay. Yeah, I, I think that's a I think that's a great idea. I think it's a great I agree. idea. <laughs> I think yeah. it's a great idea. So yeah, I mean, if somebody, if somebody wants, yeah. Does anybody want to second that motion? I'll second I that. second that. Okay. Uh, so motion second. Um, all in favor? Can I ask one more? Can I ask one? Is, this only, is this only from Monotomy Manor? Yeah, because they don't have a tenant. Okay, can I say something? Go ahead, it Sierra. really should be for each building. I think there's a lot of issues from each tenant association that does involve maintenance and to have no communication with it. I mean, I know that uh, someone has said that they do have communication daily with Bob and uh, Roland. From my understanding, one is the director and the other one is the superintendent of the director. Um, however, there is a whole team that also involves maintenance and I don't know how involved they are. I don't know who overlooks the job. I know that I think that the jobs should be overlooked. So to just have more communication would be ideal for oh, every think, single association. But the, the, but the presidents are the representative or are you looking for more representatives for your own? No, I'm just looking for the presidents to communicate with not only Bob and Roland, but maybe the whole actual team. I think that the people that are maybe actually doing the job may have something more to say than the people that are just directing mm -hmm. the maintenance team. Yeah. Okay. So I, I, right I, okay. Yeah, I think this. Yeah, I think um, Joanne's yeah. suggestion is a good one because I think if you want people to get involved, they should know uh, what goes on at the meetings and how they can have an input. I think the thing is we don't want, you know, 17 people from uh, three different developments or even one development going up at these meetings. Because then it would be very difficult. There's one. So that's not unreasonable at all. But as far as your real suggestion about having to meet with all the maintenance men, I don't think that's a good idea for a couple of reasons. Number one, maintenance men should be out there doing work orders. As it is, we, we have to keep up with all of those things. And secondly, the maintenance men should not be getting orders except from the direct supervisors. We do not want maintenance people taking direction from a resident or a contractor unless specified in a particular case. So I don't think that will be productive for your own. I think that will be counterproductive. 
as far as Joanne's suggestion, I think they have one person for an unrepresented tenant organization who doesn't have a president, so they're not walking over the president's uh, jurisdiction. So if there is no president, and that, that person could change uh, from month to month if need be. Uh, so at least if some people get familiar with what can happen at these residents, at these uh, uh, Exactly. I think it's a great idea. So we do have a motion on the table. Right. Do you want to restate your motion? And it was seconded. Um, any more discussion? Yeah, so I'm still confused if it's just for one or all buildings. Because talking to Pam Hauser and Kathy, they say there's no problem with their buildings. No, they, it's just a representative. Just for Monotomy Manor. Just for Monotomy Manor. And it's, it's a representative at the tenant association meetings that we have on a monthly basis. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Gar. Yes. Joanne? Yes. Yorella? Yes. Brian? Yes. And uh, I'm a yes. Uh, so how do we make that appointment or how do we choose that person? That's the next question. Oh, the organizing committee can. Okay. Okay. I would send someone because they'll be the ones most involved in setting up the elections, explaining what a president does, and so forth. Perfect. Okay, that's a great idea, Julie. Thanks. Um, Part two. Yeah. <laughs> a website. A website. <laughs> I was talking to John Griffin about this. I went out and you know why reinvent the wheel? I looked at all these websites of housing authorities, and I must say we score very high. <laughs> Some of them have a building, a um, an address, and a uh, email address. That's it. <laughs> and we do much better than that. But but as we've been talking about, it needs updating. And what I think of the advantage is of doing a really thorough job is that a lot of the telephone calls that come into the office could be answered on the web page. Yeah. Therefore, relieving a lot of the staff and John from having to answer all these questions again and again, one by one. Um, and some people have done it quite well. Um, that I think the challenge is you want to include as much important information as possible but you also want to make it accessible so it's readable. Um, so I was, uh, I'm working on it <laughs> and I'm getting, I was wondering actually, John, if I could talk to the web person to see what is important. But some things that we definitely need to do um, is uh, I'll be, obviously the bios, Fiorella has to have one, I have to have, a uh, housing authority email address and someone suggested to me there might be a general one for the board so people can just put that in and it'll go to all the members of the board um also uh another thing that they did is they have um, some towns have put the waiting list for applications on that way people don't have to call and say where am i how can i find out and i don't know quite how they do it they must do it in a way that protects people's privacy but i'd like to know more about that they also have job announcements at the housing authority um let me see some other and reports because people call the office can i have the such and such report well they have all of the recent reports there and you guess you have to have links and since you just saw my computer run out of electricity, you know I'm not really <laughs> the best person uh, to organize this, but I'm sure John has a great person who can do it. Another challenge is collecting all of the data um, and updating it. I mean, we could have the perfect website in a couple of weeks, but a year from now, there's some information that needs to be there and so there has to be a process in which um information that a new report a new issue like covid and so forth which is on our website but
but gets mm -hmm. translated to the um, website. And one thing I'm toying with, and I haven't yet talked to John Griffin, is getting somebody once a week or something who actually is responsible for doing that and pulling it all together, getting it to the webmaster, because um, it's, it's a lot of work, but I think it cuts down a lot of confusion, telephone calling, complaints, and so forth. If we can get that information in a way that people can find it out and they don't have to contact the office all the time. Um, Let's just stop I serving if you don't what you're trying to get to. Can I just finish? Um, right, go ahead. Also, there are photos. We need new photos. And it would be, I think, important to get photographs that represent the diversity of all of our tenants now. Um, so I, that would be important. And we need to put uh, the, the Joe Daly Memorial on also. So there's quite a lot that has to be um, passed on to the webmaster. And I think I'd like to talk to John Griffin a lot more about that to see if there's a way that, I mean, you can't have one thing come into the office and then he drops everything, he has to get the webmaster. There must be a system that we can arrange and maybe with some extra help. So, but I do think, first of all, our webpage is how we present ourselves to the public, how people know about us and know about our housing and how to apply. Um, what, oh, the legal aid lawyer who was asked to comment on one of our reports said she'd like to have our policies that we've, that we've voted on also on the webpage so that people can push a link and then they can read what the policy is. And yeah. it can be done <laughs> with the right webmaster. And, but I do think it's important to have more information, more up-to-date um, information and new photographs, which we may get from the presidents of tennis associations so that people can see our residents doing in various activities. And again, I think they should represent the diversity uh, of the population in the housing authority because people are applying and they want to know, you know, is this a place I'll be welcome? So that's that's what I have to say. <laughs> but I think it's gonna take a while to get all of these pieces together. Yeah, it takes it takes some time. And it takes time to just make sure it's updated and it takes a full time effort. We appreciate you taking the the time, Joanne. Appreciate you doing the investigation and saying that we have a pretty good website <laughs> compared to a lot of other people. Uh, that's that's all due to John's efforts and the webmaster's efforts. So um, I think if you work with John and John is the webmaster, if you're willing to take that on, that, that's great. And, uh, I will have another update. By the way, I think our meeting notes are perfect um, because some of them put, well, we opened the meeting, we voted on two things, and then we adjourned. And you have no idea what the tenant president said or what the yeah. discussion was. So I'd like to keep. <laughs> yeah, cool. Okay. Um, anything else, guys? Go ahead, Griffin. They, okay. No, I just want to address um, just on the on, on the policies and um, and the website in general. That's uh, what we're going to talk about afterwards. Is um, one of the uh, descriptions and, and suggestions from DA City regarding the resident service coordinator grant uh, is, is that someone that does update um, the information on the website is, is probably one of their possible uh, jobs in, in gathering that information. So that, that, that's a positive thing. And as, as, as far as the policies, though, um, on our website, on the left, left side you'll see the thing that talks about the annual plan the annual plan that we have um and it's on the website you click on it, it'll actually give you the the link to every housing authority in the state and it, and a copy of their annual plan so you can actually do some comparisons if you really want right. but the, in the annual in the annual plan um it'll list it'll have 
uh, our policies, a lot of our policies listed. We can click on, you'll see it. It actually has all our capital, um, all the projects that we talk about, all our cap capital plans. That's all in the annual plan and a, uh, a copy of our budget information. That's all on the annual plan now. And that was that was new as of last year, this past year. Uh -huh. um, it was the first first time we needed an annual plan. So that's all that information. If you click on that link and go to Arlington, um, a lot of that information that you will see will be in that, or that you're uh, discussing is actually in that annual plan. So. Yeah, but we can take a look at that. You, you need, when they look at the page, they need to know right away, where are the policies? Where is this? Where's that? These, this is the public who may know nothing. But anyway, we can talk about it. They can take it out, take it offline, and you can you can set up the website by subject and, and areas of expertise and that type of stuff. So, right. Uh, go ahead, Brian. One suggestion. I mean, I know that um, websites are great, but they're a nightmare to maintain when we don't have a designated person. Um, you know, perhaps we can hire somebody in the short term, um, or if we have a volunteer, um, I'm sure John Ward might want to help us since he's got a big interest in this. I mean, somebody really has to look at the website and point out the areas that are, are old. You know, we don't have the current president up here and there. I mean, and if somebody makes a list of this stuff, I mean, John can have the webmaster correct it in the meantime. So we could bring this thing up to par, um, and I'm pleased that it is a nice site, but we could bring it up to um, up to today's standard very quickly by somebody simply making a list of what's the old and what needs to be changed. Yeah, but I think if you, you can refigure it too. Oh, I agree. But I agree. But if we can get all the presidents listed correctly and in and, and your bios and, and your emails and stuff listed correctly, I mean, that's just a start, you know? Yes. Yeah, then, then you can do it by category. You can set it up by right. category and, and pull right. down methods and all that stuff. But yeah, you're right. I think you're just going to get the basics done first and then you can start to reconfigure. Right. Go to the, so we need a volunteer. Yeah. yeah. So. Oh, well, I'll work on it. <laughs> I, know you, I know you will. I mean, <laughs> and, and you've caught a lot of these things, Joanne. So if you just make the list, I mean, we can, John can get the webmaster to bring it up to date in the meantime. Yeah. Cool. No, actually, a volunteer isn't a totally bad idea. As you probably know, this yeah. woman, I, I, a software engineer on maternity leave, just redid the. Code. Yeah, no, no kidding. <laughs> we should call her. By watching the baby in a one and a half year old. So we right. might actually find somebody who might want to volunteer to help us. And right. did you reach that. out? Did you reach out to her? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I think she's busy meeting the governor. And yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. Thanks, Joanne. Yeah, I think you know it, it is an out. It's a focus. Um, we're trying to get that up to up to speed. And um, Marion King just made a great suggestion. How about a high school community service project? So. I'm sure there are a bunch of kids out there that know that website or web uh, design like the back of their hands, man. So more than great. we do. Yes. Yeah. That's a good idea. It's a great idea. Thanks, Mary. So uh, there was one other suggestion on sort of bilingual and how do we get it to sort of not right away, but you know, over time, can we start to think about different languages and stuff? So okay, John. So, yep. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to say, I, I don't know if I heard it right, but as far as uh, information as to the waiting list with names, we could not do that. It would have to be numbers. Uh, and also, uh, as the tenants who are uh, not advised of it and allow it, uh, we should not be relinquishing their names because actually by giving someone's name as being a, a resident of our building, we're actually, in a sense, indicating that they're low-income residents. And I don't think that's a uh, that could be a mm -hmm. violation of privacy. So we just want to sure. be careful when we get that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Good. Yeah. Cool. All right. Anything else? Thanks, Joanne. Uh, Johnny, update on COVID-19? Yes. Um, I have, as you know, we're, we're waiting. Um, with, we've, been di we've been working with uh, Christine Bongiorno from the Board of Health, Board of Health uh, for a while now. She's anxiously awaiting the vaccines. Uh, we had to fill out a survey that we sent into the state uh, probably about three or four weeks ago. And I worked with Christine on that. We submitted it. 
last week, uh, during the middle of the week, I got a, a couple emails from Ben Stone, uh, director at DHCD, and he was calling specifically regarding uh, the survey that we filled out. Uh, and we had requested 640 vaccinations. Uh, he wanted to confirm those numbers with us. He wanted to confirm our partnership, the Board of Health. And, and then uh, we confirmed that and then he sent back, he said, John, do you want them in one distribution or uh, do you need them in two separate weeks? I saw to Christine Bongiorno and she, her, her response was, uh, we can do them all in five days and we are so ready. So that message was passed along to uh, Ben Stone at DHCD. Um, but the plan would be that the Board of Health uh, would be coming in with the nurses and, and the people to be able to do all of our buildings, our elderly buildings, uh, in five days, uh, uh, very much in the same fashion that they did the flu shot. So it'd probably be door to door. Um, so that's where we are right now. And the only thing we're waiting on uh, is for the vaccines to get to the Board of Health. But it, from my conversations with DHCD, um, it seems like they're on top of it. They're pushing it. I think there's a large number of people that are really anxious um, to see the housing authorities. I, I, know, I know I heard a comment earlier that some of the housing authorities in the area were getting done. Um, most of those housing authorities um, are federal or federal housing that have uh, 202 uh, or the smaller housing authorities uh, with the state that have you know 40 or 50 apartments so the board of health if they're receiving 100 uh, vaccinations a week they can do a, a 50 unit building um, but it during, during the process of the whole the whole thing is the federal buildings um, were entitled and enabled to uh, fill out a, a form back in the fall uh, for their federal buildings, and it was specifically excluding uh, local public housing authorities uh, from participating in that program. That's the one that CVS and Walgreens are, are doing in a lot of this, uh, the federal developments. But as far as the state goes, the state uh, at DAC, they're on top of it. They want to get it done. They want us to, to work with the residents uh, and do everything we can to get it done. And, they understand, and they're the ones that are going to be uh, working with the state as far as getting the distributions to the Board of Health. Great. Thanks, John. Thanks for the update. I know you're working it, and it's very difficult. Wait, can I something? Phase two, right. phase two, from the governor, phase two, part two. That's where we get it. Phase two, what? Yeah, good. Go ahead, so, Brian. Brian. Go ahead, Brian. So uh, I just want to point out, uh, John, that. I wouldn't, we probably don't want to encourage uh, our tenants to wait for us to do this. Uh, for instance, I know my wife is in the COVID team at the Mount Auburn, and they were told Friday that the hospitals will no longer receive any vaccine, period, that folks have to use the state mega centers, the last Fenways. So, and I've read some articles that communities are not going to get any vaccine as well. So. My concern is if we have tenants that are in the age bracket, um, they should, they should, and we should be helping them somehow. They should be signing up and getting the appointments um, through the system. I mean, you could dial on um, I, yesterday. You know, if you are over 75, or you could, you could dial on and get a, a shot uh, this Thursday at Fenway Park. There were 228 openings. There were like three or 400 openings at Gillette. So, so you know, some of our residents that fall into the age bracket could could get it, and maybe they have got it. Um, so maybe we need to uh, take two tracks. Maybe we need to have a notice somehow go out and encourage them and work with them to make the appointment online, and maybe we get them a ride there or something. But there are there are openings to get your vaccine now, uh, and folks shouldn't wait because I, my gut tells me that you know we may not, Christine may not get any vaccine. Um, it might go to all these mega centers and this whole game is changing every day. So uh, I'd hate to see people wait. Good point, Brian. Yeah, that's an excellent point. I think if, if I think if people are over 75 and they qualify and they can get get in there to get it done, get it done. Yeah. 
Yeah, let's, you know what? It, it maybe, maybe we should put a representative in each building and have folks come down and we actually register them for the shot and we, we hire a bus and we just take them in there. You know, I mean, um, they, they could do it now or well, some yeah. type of, we figure out some way. I mean, my and point is there are plenty of openings and uh, people just don't know that. They, 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 they don't, they're not computer savvy. That's the problem. Right. I just found that Council of Ages doing some of the stuff too. So, right. go ahead, Joanne. Ryan, I just found out that the city of Arlington, all the Walgreens and the CBSs are not getting any vaccine. We have right. to go to Lexington, Waltham, and Everett in order to get a shot from Walgreens and CBS. And no, I would like to say if we get our shots here at the building, I would like to see an EMT or an ambulance or something outside the building in case somebody has a reaction. You're right, absolutely. Uh, and let me just let me just touch base on that. The uh, it's more confusing to figure out the CV, CVS sites than it is to do Gillette and Fenway. Um, this the CVS and Fresh Pond is a site, but they make you go through the CVS computer system to book the appointment. So if, if you went onto the state system. Um, and you answer the three or four questions, it then brings you, you put in your zip code and it'll show you the, the places. Um, and, you know, my son received his EMT card on Saturday and he had an appointment to get a shot at 1030 on Sunday. So, I mean, there are plenty of openings. I think people just don't know how to do it. Yeah. And my mother-in-law got it from the council on aging at the yeah. high school. <laughs> so. yeah. Yeah, it's all transportation too. And a lot great. of us don't have transportation. Yeah, yeah no, I just like that's to say fine. this. Um, having them get their vaccines on site is the very best program. Right. Because people are in motorized wheelchairs. They can't go to the toilet. Sometimes you go right in and get it. Sometimes you wait two hours. Um, also, they're being exposed to other people. Um, so. I, I really hope that works out to have it done on site. Yeah. I'll agree. Yeah. But it, it's in the meantime. Yeah, I agree. agree. Is I agree. All, excuse me. Is everything all set up? If they did get the vaccine, they know exactly what nurses they're going to use and how they're going to do it. Oh, the Board of Health? Yes. Yes. So good. They, they just they just completed all the first responders from Arlington and, and a bunch of them. Towns around Arlington. So, mm -hmm. right. thank you. Okay. Thanks, John. Any other questions on the update? Thanks, John. Um, number eight, never source energy efficiency tools. Yes, this is, um, I know we've done this in the past, but we're actually going to get all new uh, light fixtures in the hallways and the parking lots. Uh, lights, uh, new lighting is going to be installed. Uh, Eversource Energy Efficiency Awards for each one of the buildings at Winslow, at Cusack Terrace, and at uh, Chestnut Manor. As of right now, we're still working and waiting on the hair from about Drake Village, um, but they're going to be exchanging, uh, putting, once again, they're going to update the, the lighting fixtures and, and the bulb, uh, the, the more energy efficient uh, fixtures and bulbs in, in all those buildings. In all the common areas, the community rooms, the hallways, and the park, and the lobbies, and the parking areas, they're not going to be doing the uh, in uh, going into any of the units at this time. So uh, that's awesome. That's something Bob and Rolly uh, have worked on for uh, continue to work on uh, with the energy efficiency award, and they did an awesome job. And uh, in the next cool. couple of months, you'll you'll be notified when when they'll be in the buildings, but. Uh, we're going to get all new, all new light fixtures to the uh, common areas. So, uh, excellent thing. Hey, great, thanks. Uh, um, can I bring up one more thing? Brian. Yeah, go ahead, Brian. I'm just reading some of the chats here, and it just hit me uh, in terms yeah. of transportation. Uh, you, you know that they they allow the companion of a of an somebody over 75 to also get the vaccination. Right. So. You know, instead of getting a bus, maybe you could put the call out and see if we've got companions that would like to drive some of our residents in. Yeah, exactly. I, um, excuse me, yeah. I think that's very risky. 
Well, you don't have to go. To take them to the Gillette Stadium. Uh, no, Fenway. Uh, Fenway has got tons I'll of open. I research on elder abuse. I don't think. I really don't think they. If it's a next door neighbor, you know them well. You know the family. That's one thing. But the day after the governor announced this, Craigslist was filled with yeah, people. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. The wrong. Yeah, I mean, that's good. Uh, uh, yeah, I would say companions that we know. You know what I mean? If there are volunteers that that are in the community and they're good people, and we know they're good people. But just a suggestion. Cool. All right. Um, GHCD item nine: Residential Service Coordinated Grant Award. John. As, as we briefly talked about tonight, uh, the residents uh, we awarded the resident service uh, coordinator grant from DHCD and that, that allows us to uh, hire someone to, to work with the residents, to help them out with any services they need, uh, to give them information. They can do things as far as communications and and um, and giving them, making sure they get the information that they need. Uh, it's a position um, we, we, when we, in March, when the, when the awards came out and we didn't receive the award, uh, we were very disappointed because we felt this was probably one of the areas that we needed to work on the most. Uh, and then, you know, a few weeks ago, uh, Mara from DHCD called me and uh, we had a conversation. And she just, they got some more money, they got some additional funding, uh, and they decided to uh, give us a resident service coordinator grant. There'll be, uh, it's $40,000 for, uh, I, I believe, for a period of two or three years. Uh, and thirty thousand, I can go towards salary, and ten thousand dollars would be used toward uh, any services needed. Um, so the, it's it's a pretty flexible award. We could do it uh, in a number of different ways. I know I had a conversation with uh, Joanna about it. And she had suggested possibly um, a college student uh, intern type situation, um, and and that's that's a possibility that we'll we, we'll look at. Is it full time, Joan? Um, no, it won't. It won't be full time because one with th the salary would be the thirty thousand dollar range. Yeah. Uh, and two, um, the benefits as a full for a full time person would probably be, you know, seventy five percent of that uh, of, yeah. on top of the salary. So, uh, I, I see it more as a part time uh, position right now. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna be looking into that and uh, seeing what you're gonna come out. Can we post the job some now? From the, some of the can staff I, also. Can I can I just speak to that? What I was talking to John about when my daughter was in grammar school in elementary school, they needed social workers to work with groups of kids and stuff like that, and they got third third year social work students. Who are doing like a practicum who are yep. supervised by their faculty members and i think this way we could make that thirty thousand dollars stretch much further than and and i mean we have what well over a thousand residents now they don't all need social workers but um i was also looking at the website for the state agency there are so many programs i mean they could really really help residents get in touch with programs that that can help them but you know there there's so many and i would think that they would be young enthusiastic um it's part of their training i don't know it'd be worth looking into i think Absolutely. because we could make that money stretch so much further and sure. cover many more of our residents i really think we need social workers cool okay when will you post the job, John? Uh, probably in the next in the next few weeks after uh, we talk and uh, to some of the staff to find out exactly um, what they envision. Also, because I'd like to get their input on it, what they really, really need um, from you know the, all the all the property managers and, and Jen and I think, I think it's important they're going to be working with them all the time. So. Um. But the post a job means you preclude 
reaching out to schools of social work and see if they'd be interested in yeah. having their third year students. And they all have field work. Wait, what, so, what colleges would you go to? Who are the, uh, who are the, who are the best in social work? No, you were, were you at Brandeis or how, where were you? Also, Leslie has just started a master's in social work. Did you, what was the first one you said? Hmm? Did you say what was the first one? School of Social Work. Which one? Uh, East, Boston College has a school of social work. And Leslie is just beginning one, which might yep. mean they're looking for placements. It's nearby. I don't know. I think it's worth looking into. I think it's good for students that um, need credit. They can do it for credits for their uh, education. So you don't have to pay them. They're doing it for credit. Yeah, I think what you probably need is probably have someone overseeing it. And then you start to have an outreach program for credits and that type of stuff. And then you can double you up. You know? yep. Because I think what you need, and someone mentioned it, I don't know if it was Marianne that mentioned, you know, consistency is key also, right? If we can hire someone that sits on for a while, and then you can have to build a program around the internship type stuff to help you uh, reach out to more more people. Super awesome. will be the same. Yeah. Cool. All right, John. Good stuff. Way to go. I think that was a critical piece for everybody over the last couple of months talking about a liaison between the tenant and the board. So I think that's going to help a ton. So nice job getting the funding, John. Uh, item 10, approval of amendment. Number 11, uh, uh, yep. do, we, do we really want to do this one? You're giving us some $1.4 million, John. Do we really want to talk about this? <laughs> I don't. It's, yeah. it, it's, uh, it, it's, it's always good when you get an increase in, uh, in the contract and financial assistance from PHCD. So, yes, this is something we definitely want to accept. <laughs> do, we need, do we need a vote on this one? Yes. Yeah. Anybody want to explain it? Or John, anybody have any questions? Or anybody want to make a motion? Or any questions? Anybody want to make a motion? Yeah, John. Say that again, Brian. I was going to say a guy can go. Okay. Yeah, I'll make, I'll make a motion to, uh, I guess, accept the 1.4 million. How's, how do you want it to read, John? Approval of amendment uh, to approve amendment number 11 to CFA 5001 in the amount of $1,406,131. Yes, I'll go on John's so moved. I'll second it. Okay. All in favor, Joanne? Yes. Fiorella? Yes. Gar? Yes. Brian? Yes. Great job. Nick? Yes, great job. All right, cool. Uh, item 11, approval of the minutes of December 16, 2020. These are the ones that were tabled? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Can I just make a comment, Nick? Yes, go ahead, please. The um, historically, our minutes were more a summary of discussions and not, not, trying to do a play-by-play -play of what was said. Um, and my only concern is, now that we have the, the meetings taped and people can watch them and replay them and so forth, I'm not sure the play-by-play -play here is exactly as how the game was played. You know, and I know it's difficult to take the minutes this fast and to get what everybody's saying. Um, I just fear that some of the stuff is not absolutely correct or not um, might be uh, and I hate to say wrong, but might not be absolutely correct. Maybe, maybe we. I recommend if we go back to, uh, you know, a summary of the discussions, and then make this video up on the website so keep, people can watch the video or the recording uh, as we go forward, um, so that they can, if they really want to play the whole thing back, they could. Um, I mean, that's that's my my concern. Okay. Great, join. <clears throat> Well, the problem with summarizing it is all summaries are interpretation. And I think that that puts a lot of pressure and everything on the person summarizing it, as opposed to just taking down the conversation. And uh, I've actually 
I like it. <laughs> I'm a social scientist. I really like how full the minutes are. And um, unless there's, I mean, you could obviously put them more in categories, but summaries are really interpretation. And I don't think we should put that responsibility on somebody who has the notes. Okay. John, do we make the uh, video accessible to everybody on the website? Yes. Okay, cool. Thank you. Uh, Fiorella, go ahead. Um, with making the video accessible, could we not um, take the recordings and make the minutes as an actual, from the conversation that we're having right now in general, is there any way that we can just literally write down everything everyone's saying? Just if someone doesn't want to look through the whole video, they can just kind of read through it. Yeah. yeah. How do we, how, what did you mean, Fiorella? How do we do that? Well, for example, like, um, Right now, at the conference, for example, they had the video and then they had a um, document where you could just follow what they were saying, oh, okay. you know? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, maybe we put that on the agenda for next week, uh, next week, yes. next month. Um, or not, you know, how do we want to sort of, John Greco, any, any advice there on the, on the minutes, uh, John Greco, you're on mute if you're talking. Oh, there you go. Still on mute. Yeah, so you don't have to have a full compendium of everything that's said. You've got to uh, show the substance of the discussions. The time when you'd want to go into something a little more in detail, if somebody says, I want the minutes to reflect that I was against this, or I was for this, or that I suggested this. In that case, you let the minutes reflect. But other than that, you don't have to have a word for word of the minutes. But the problem with, I think it, it's great if you could do that, but the thing is to put it on on uh, the video and then have somebody uh, type it, let's transcribe it from the video. The typing will probably be tremendous. If this is a two hour meeting, uh, that typing right. would be a lot of time. So I think you've got to find something practical that still meets the, meets, meets the It was law. just literally mentioned on the quotes though. I, I agree with that. But again, if we are just, um, it's again just an interpretation of everything and there are ways that for example when you speak and you're writing out a text it'll write out what you're saying so right. i'm sure there are ways that that can become automatic and then kind of go back and just make sure or not even you know but at least it's as close to what we did say rather than it being a summarization of yeah. however the person that's hearing it it would be an interpretation for them yeah, when we maybe we take it off. I think if there's a technical device that does that easily, that would be wonderful. I'm not sure there is such a thing. That's the problem. Um, there is. There is. I just want to say, I for three years, I reported on the school committee meetings for your Arlington, which means they were summaries. I had to listen to the meeting and to the tape. I must have spent eight hours doing this because in order to summarize it you really the arguments you really have to think about them pull them together and try try to interpret them correctly it'd be just even much easier to put down the dialogue and let the reader decide yeah okay why don't we take it off go ahead john john wood john wood go ahead hold on yeah i've, I've spoken about this once before is that the uh the uh, uh, secretary doesn't need to try to possibly record all the conversations. Trying to, the good idea that I've heard presented here was the idea of the person copying the minutes should try to uh, uh, include a topic in the minutes that's written and then have a time hack that relates to the recording. So anybody who's interested doesn't have to sit through a whole hour and a half to two hours is where these put these meetings are going to to locate this so being topical and giving a time hack on the recording would expedite this for anybody who's really interested that's what thanks. i have to put in thanks john nick, brian nick yeah i hate to say it. i hate to say this but i agree with john i like the <laughs> idea john, i agree with you <laughs> but i my feel is just, you know and not to belabor it but but I mean, it's kind of fun to read all this and you can see it play by play, but 
you know, do I remember if this is the exact play by play two months ago? You know, and I, in this there is isn't. But uh, I think it's a great. I, I like John's idea. Make yeah, a topic, cool. put the topic, and then you can go back to the the, the audio. Okay. All right. Um, so the approval of minutes of December. I think we should probably think maybe talk about it next next month. Uh, item eleven: approval of minutes of December sixteenth, twenty twenty. Do I have a motion? Uh, with um, the paragraph that says um, it's page. It says Rachel at the bottom of the page. Rachel from a monotony manner wants her behavior. Blah blah blah. And then it says, and the hat ridiculous. I don't think. She you so break it uh, there's a paragraph at the bottom of the page it's, it's, um, it's page two and it it begins with Rachel yep. and um, the second line it says move to another apartment and the hat is ridiculous that's that maybe that was he the heat it's going to be heat heat okay Nick, can i say something who is that that's marianne in the hauser building hey marianne how you um, doing yeah sorry hi so um referring to what brian is actually talking about i read the november meeting notes online and what struck me is i thought I wonder if this was transcribed by Dragon or one of those other sort of you know, word to, you know, verbal to word. Yep. The, the notes don't read very well. And so um, that's why I'm thinking if we type them out kind of the way John Greco had talked about, um, that seems more doable. I just wonder if this was used by like a Dragon software program or something for the meeting notes. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Okay, Let's take a look. It, it uh, wasn't. It wasn't used by a Dragon software program, um, but you know, Zoom may have. If we just switch to Zoom, Zoom may have a translation uh, thing in there. As part of their package, so I can look into that also. I think they do, I think they do John. Mm -hmm. They do. So we might they... be able to look at that. So that might be an easy way to do it. But All right. so we have a motion on the table. Do I have a second? Second. Minutes. What is the motion again? The minutes. Okay, oh, Brian. Well, to prove that this, we're approving the December minutes. Yes. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, all in favor? Yes. Uh, Brian? Yes. Fiorella? Yes. Man? Joanne? Oh, I second it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Nick is a yes. <laughs> uh, item 12, approval of minutes of January 20th, 2021 meeting. Any discussion? Um, I'll make a motion to approve them. Do I have a second? I'll second. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Yeah. Yes. Yarella. Yes. Brian. Yes. Joanne. Yes. And Nick is a yes. Uh, I think that's it. Any other discussion? Uh, yeah, one question. Uh, as as we look forward to getting back to normal here, uh, hopefully by summer, um, have we, John? Have we? Have you discussed with this cable TV outfit if they would continue to record the meetings and put them up there for us? I, I have not had a conversation with ACMI, but I, I can call him. Uh, I mean, I think it's. A, I mean, it, as long as they're willing, I, I think it's a good idea to, because obviously we go back face to face, we're not going to have a guests and be nice at the cable outfit. Stuff. 
go to them and, and put them up and then we could you know, put them up on the website and so forth. So maybe it's worth a call. Oh, great. I'll call it, I'll call ACMI. Great. Okay. Anything else guys? Hey. Motion to adjourn. I motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All right. Uh, all in favor, car. Yeah, I'm seconded. Ryan. Ryan. Fiorella? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Uh, Joanne? Yes. And Nick is a yes. All right, guys. Thanks for uh, joining and uh, have a great month. And uh, talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, guys. Go right home. <laughs> John, can I ask you a question? Oh. No. <laughs> Too bad. Um, are you ever going to have somebody back at the front desk? I'm having problems. I've had three tenants come up to me looking for people to do make a new fob or get a fob, and there's nobody there. It's getting quite difficult. Should they call? This one doesn't speak English. I had to get Josephine to translate. It, no, she, she if they need a, a new. Fob. They can call the maintenance line for that if they if they need a fob, then someone can make the fob for them. Yeah, but half the time there's nobody here to make the fob. No, if you call them, if you call the maintenance not line. Then we'll we'll get the work order for it, and then make the fob. Well, she wanted it immediately. I didn't know what to say. Also, can I possibly get a listing of all the cars and who owns the cars in our parking lot? Is that isn't a violation of privacy, Mister John. Yeah, I'm not sure yeah, if I can that give way. that to you. I'll find out. What? I mean, it's just that on weekends when there's a storm and I got to have people move their cars, you know, well, it makes it a lot towing easier. Comp number that you can call if you see that, that towing specific. company does crap, Fiorella. They are you they serious? Don't tow. I'm okay. serious. Also, you mentioned um, how many maintenance people do you usually see around the building? One. One? Do you know his name? One. Yep. What's his name? His name is Dave. Dave? Okay. Dave. And the towing company yeah. is not really picking up cars when you guys call it in? Steven's, Steven's towing, and they're not allowed to tow cars that have a Winslow Tower sticker on them. <clears throat> okay. Right. So, but, so but that you're calling about cars. Yeah. Don't have stickers. No, no. I'm asking for a listing of people because if they park in our middle three spaces, if it snows on a weekend, they have to move those cars out of those spaces so that they can come in and plow. Right. The housing authority can plow. And if the and if I don't have know who it is, half the time I don't know who owns the car. So I gotcha. can't let them perform them to move their car so they can plow. Are the residents That's giving notices problem. to um not park there during snowstorms? I've tried that. Okay, and it does okay. And I have notices right. up on the doors and everything here. You, you okay. know what the dilemma excuse me, you know what the dilemma is, Pam? Um Giving out information of who owns a vehicle based on license number is really not allowed. Even the police department now, years ago, uh, they used to do it more willingly, but today they really have to have, to have a need to know, and that's going to be a good need to know. And they also have to um, let, uh, they also have to somehow indicate what police officer is asking for the identity of the person who has that license number. So it's not as easy as it used to be. So people are being careful because of privacy issues. So if you okay. moved in, yeah. say there were three, there were three vehicles, three spaces that needed to be notified. Um, you could talk with John on that because that's enough of a need to know that on just those three spaces, you know the three places you could contact them uh, and ask them to move the car if you wanted to. But well, as far as giving you a blanket okay. list, a blanket list, I'd be concerned about to be honest. Well, 
Okay. Well, the thing is, those three spaces, most of the time, it's three different people all the time. Well, why is the car getting towed out. in general? If the place well, is to get towed, I mean, a plowed. They can't. They can't tow them because if they have a Winslow Tower sticker on it for Fiorella. All right, okay. but there's That's no the policy, policy that says okay. If if there's a snowstorm going on and the place needs to get plowed, why aren't these spots out of range? So it, even if you have a sticker on your parking there, you're taking away the chances for the whole place to get plowed. I feel like that should be a. Do we assign parking? That that's a good point. Do we they, we assign no. parking spaces by number or not? No, no, we should not. No, we do not. Okay. No, we so, shouldn't. No, for security reasons, we don't. Okay, so you just have it by sticker. Anyone who has a sticker can put it the car in any space then would right. it help if you notified residents that uh, from a certain period of time, you might have to put that in, in almost even the lease for people who, who've got parking uh, permissions. Anyone during the cleared snow emergencies, you have to decide what that is and be specific in our parking spaces two, three, and four. That's well, what we've done in the past. Well, well, even after they get, sorry, go. Okay. What we've done in the past is uh, Bob and Roly, if they know the cars that are out there, uh, and we know there's a snowstorm coming up. Bob and Lily will ask them to park in where the employees park overnight. So if it's an overnight snowstorm, they park in where the employees park. They don't don't get towed. Uh, that opens up the the middle of the Winslow Towers parking lot because uh, it, it's it's almost impossible to make that turn when there are three cars there when you have a plow and your pickup truck. Could you so could you uh, block it with a uh, cones, John, or uh, horses or cones, or something like that, before a snowstorm? Or is that too difficult? No, we have before, but it, it's a lot of times, you know, it's a car there that they they may not even, you know, if they're not home, if they're out somewhere else, or I mean, lately everyone's been home, but um, trying to track down who the person who has that car is sometimes difficult. Even, John, even, even, Mr. Greco, even when there's no snow, we those three people that park in the middle don't know how to park their car. It's half in the space, half out of the space. The, van, the ride vans can't make the turn. The delivery trucks can't make the turn. It's stupid. So should so we even have the parking the spaces people? there and can parking spaces get taken away? Yeah, if, so much if, you, if you prohibited parking in those three spaces, I'm sure there'd be people who say we had didn't have enough spaces to begin with, and now you took three away. Right. That would be the easiest right. answer: is to take those three pa spaces and paint them off and say no parking. And that would be all year, all That's year round. Mm -hmm. I would love to do that. <laughs> what do you think, John? You think you get a lot of people who felt like they didn't have enough parking to begin with? I, I think yes. we just heard tonight that there's not enough parking there. Right. So I guess so that's that's the, the tough choice. That's why tough that's why he's about, a big yeah. job there. <laughs> the tough job. I that's mean why he, I'm he asking everybody. If we, that's why I'm asking if we can get in touch with the state building over here, the DSS building, and maybe at night, just for at night, have see if we can use their spaces at night. During the day they can park on the street. But at night we need to I get mean, them even off during the, the night though. Um that you can uh, sign on the Arlington website for parking overnight. So if these cars yeah, ten, don't have ten, a spot, we could at least make it almost um, without them having to fill it out. Good, I don't know. That's only that's only good for ten pack ten waivers. I've ten used waivers, it before. Right. It's for ten waivers. Right. And I that's think that's it. Funny, though with the amount of snow that we've been getting, I mean, spring's well, almost. But the thing is, I'm talking all the time because. There's no overnight parking in the town of Arlington. That's it. So if we can so, use uh, their spaces at night, it would make it a lot easier. It, it's off the street. We're not bothering anybody. And just make it known that if you park over there, you have to have your car gone by 8 o'clock in the morning. If the if the state would go along with that, that's that's probably a very good idea. Because, I mean, if they would give, let's say, even say 10 spaces, 9 spaces, then you say, listen, we're making 10 spaces available over there, but we're getting rid of those three spaces that are impeding the plows right. of the other drivers. And that would be worth doing if we, if the, the state would allow it. I think you'd have to have the, the state, you know, you know, you'd probably have to post it all cars not out by seven o'clock in the morning will be towed or something. So, 
but I mean, that's worth that's doing. That's what John Silvertown comes in handy. <laughs> That's where your silver tongue can come in handy, John. Talk to them. <laughs> Either that or I'll talk to them. That's not a problem with me. I'll go over there. I mean, but I'll have a conversation with them. I'll, I'll find out who's in charge over there. I'll speak to them. I don't know if they'll do anything and they say no, but. As I said, it's just, well, they're state funded. We're state funded. Hey. <laughs> It's just the night that we want these spaces, not all day long. That's, that's why it's getting to be a problem here, because I think there are like, I think Cheryl told me there's like eight or nine people on the waiting list for parking spaces. And that's a lot of people just spending to pay the town of Arlington. Uh, it's funny because everything they're building now is actually having less and less parking spaces. I know. <laughs> um, well, if there's anything, you know, as I said, you know, if there's anything we can do, I would be greatly appreciated, John, because we really need the help with this parking over here. It's Winslow, oh. same, same thing at Chestnut. Chestnut, where they're parking on the dirt path. The, the town of Arlington owns the property. Uh, we asked them for it. Uh, we never never got a response back from it, but uh, over at Chestnut, there's some parking that we could um, we could use. But um, town would have well, to give us a piece of yeah. I would I would check to see what this new regulation is. People with disabilities with medical disabilities can park overnight on the streets of Arlington. No, they can't. Joanne, they can't. Nope, nobody's allowed to park on the streets overnight in the town of Arlington. Oh, no. so that's what we're trying to brainstorm to I maybe see if lot. there's a way that we can discuss it with them. So we're brainstorming in order to find out if there's anything we can say to explain the situation to get the parking spots figured out. I think that's the best thing we can they do. Passed they passed something um, at the select board that said, I think you have to apply if to show that you have a medical disability and then you can park overnight and you're low income but anyway it's worth looking the thing into is though, that that's fine when it's not snowing joanne but they want all cars off the street when it snows what? so they can plow emergency and now what are the people going to do now what are, now what are the people going to do when you have people that are driving that have walkers, that have disabilities, that can't walk five miles, I know that's exaggeration, but cannot walk a distance to park their car. Explain to They're me. They're talking again. elderly people. I know. Explain to me again why you can't use the uh, parking lot across the street, the town parking lot. Because they want the town wants you to pay them $364. Uh, uh, uh. I'll look up this regulation and see if they not can everybody can afford three hundred and sixty four three hundred and sixty four dollars. I know I couldn't. I gave up my car. I would still have it. I gave it up because there was no place to park. Granted, there are lots of buildings driving, but that's a different case. <laughs> We will look into it, do anything we, we possibly can to see if we can get some more parking in the area. I would appreciate that, John. Because I know we're getting new people in the building and they have cars. I promise it'll be the, I'll get a solution, but at least we'll, we'll ask around. Okay, that's all I can ask for. Thank you, John. Have a good night. All right, everyone have a good night. Have a good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.